Welcome back to Midcap Radar. So two specific sectors that are doing very well in the session today are oil and gas as well as power utility companies, which are the big gainers today. HPCL and BPCL, in fact, have surged close to 10% today. Will this outperformance continue? We are joined by Harshwardhan Dole, the Senior Vice President of Institutional Equities at IIFL, uh, with his particular call on the oil and gas space. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Dole. Thank you so much for joining us now. Uh, first, let me talk about the power sector, you know, one that uh, both of us track. Uh, how are valuations looking currently and which are your top picks in this particular space? Hi Vivek, uh, good afternoon and thanks for having me on your show. Uh, so before we get down to the valuations of power stocks, some backdrop in terms of macro. When we talk to the companies across the sector, we found that the power demand is real, but the supply is elusive. And that is the reason why government will take frantic steps to boost up supply measures across the, across the segment. That includes generation, transmission, distribution, and there is acute shortage all across. So there are, uh, you know, companies are beefing up significant amount of capex across the chain, uh, and therefore we continue to like the sector. Uh, you know, the regulated utilities continue to be our top picks. Torrent and CAC, where uh, the earnings are more skewed toward distribution, we continue to like them the most, and to that extent, the call on the sector remains quite unchanged. Okay, quite unchanged and continues to be positive. Harshpradhan, I wanted to understand the ongoing renewable versus thermal debate and if tomorrow uh, 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 the result are as the exit polls are suggesting, there will be a book, big push on renewables. According to you, which is more return generating for shareholders, companies which are focusing more on renewables as a part of their portfolio or the traditional thermal power? Well, I think investors are agnostic whether it is a coal power or renewable power. Uh, what they are looking for is any project which earns rate of return, which is much more than my, uh, you know, opportunity cost. And there are quite a few companies within the sector who, despite having presence in the renewable side, are able to generate healthy returns. For example, Torrent, uh, they have been scaling up the, the renewable capacity quite significantly, and yet the returns are quite handsome. And that is what the investors actually look for. Uh, that it doesn't matter whether it is a gas-based power plant or a renewable or coal, uh, they are quite mindful in terms of rate of return. But yes, I think relative to the coal, the growth opportunity on the renewable side is significantly higher. And to that extent, uh, we'll weigh our options as to who can balance out the growth return ratios and cash flows. Okay. So, you know, one other big theme, you know, that investors have been talking about, Harshwadhan, is the fact that it's the return of the capex as far as power is concerned. Now, you've spoken about power utilities themselves. Uh, uh, do you have a call as far as, you know, the supply chain is concerned, especially in terms of capital goods companies, any component makers? Uh, do you have a view on that space? Vivek, while I personally don't cover uh, the cap goods and the ancillary sector, but as a house, we are extremely positive. Uh, I think the supply chain shortages are quite real. And when we spoke to power grid, uh, you know, top brass, uh, I think one of the key constraints for, uh, you know, the capacity addition is going to be the shortages across the chain, particularly transformers, conductors, and, you know, switch gears, etc. So to that extent, I think if there is, uh, if there are companies who are able to put up capacities and meet this demand, they are going to be in the sweetest of sweet spot. And the valuation themselves kind of you know reflect if some stocks are trading in near triple digit PE, uh, that in a way tells you as to how the earnings, strong earnings growth outlook is for the next considerable period in time. Okay, from power, let's switch to oil and gas now, uh, Harshwardhan, because there are big moves in oil and gas space as well today. Um, do you think it's a one-time thing that we're seeing most of the PSU rally? Are they just continuing with that? Or do you think there are actual fundamentals which will continue this rally through the course of the year and you continue to be positive on the space? So today we have actually released a, a detailed note on the sector uh, which basically says worries are gone, game is on. And we are not even relating to the outcome of the elections because we are more concerned on the broader macro and uh, which is very healthy and very supportive. We think that the oil price will remain benign, cracks will be favorable, and domestic consumption will be fairly strong. And to that extent, with strong political mandate, uh, if, if you were to believe the exit poll, will basically tilt the pricing power in favor of the industry. 
and in that case there is a significant scope for the earnings upgrade across the sector and therefore we don't think this is just a one time pop i think for example if the omc earnings can uh, surprise you by say 20 25% the valuations are extremely cheap even now and to that extent we see value across omcs as, as well as the upstream sector we continue to prefer overweight stance on these uh, these names Harshvan, then you know you spoke about OMCs. You know maybe if we could uh, delve a little deeper now that uh, you know the election verdict is uh, largely behind us. Uh, do you think that uh, once again uh, you know you will see prices go higher as far as fuel pumps are concerned? And uh, where do you see marketing margins trend from here on? And uh, could you give us the pecking order that you have, especially in terms of OMCs? Sure, I'll take the last one first because that's the easiest one. <laughs> so BPCL is our top pick. followed by hp and ioc uh, because we always prefer balanced portfolio uh, as far as price increases are concerned i think uh, i will not monitor them on a weekly or a daily or a monthly basis what i will watch out for is can the companies over a period in time pass on increase in the input cost to end consumer it could be in a form of you know bunching up of price increases or basically taking hit in a quarter and so on and so forth and that is most visible in terms of you know the uh, quarterly margins which they will actually disclose but yes i think if there is a strong political mandate the pricing power will definitely tilt in favor of these companies and that is the reason why we like them the most okay all right and they've been big outperformers last year this year itself they are up anywhere between 30 to 60% harshvardhan i wanted your take on gail uh, one is lng prices are lower uh, that is usually positive for gail the other thing and you spoke about it in your report as well is a possibility of national gas under gst of course that won't come in the budget that would be the gst council meet outcome but do you really think there is a possibility because it has been ongoing for a long time uh, is there more chatter around that in my opinion there is a very high chance that uh, if not in first 100 days but surely in the next 12 months natural gas may be included under the ambit of gst and that serves purpose of both industry as well as the government to fast track uh, you know transition towards green or clean economy today while i'm consuming natural gas i don't get input credit whereas some of the unclean fuels do get and to that extent there is no level playing field so as and when gst is basically imposed in natural gas or natural gas is included in gst there will be a level playing field and in a way consumers will be rewarded for consuming natural gas it will be a long way in terms of you know improving the gas penetration in india so to that extent gale will be a primary beneficiary of it because the transportation volumes will go up the trading volumes will go up and to that extent the valuation multiples are quite reasonable at this juncture Thank you so much, uh, Harshvardhan. You know, for joining us today and giving us a sense of both the past space, you know, the oil and gas space, uh, and a whole host of other stocks as well. But that's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar. Your stocks when we return.